Hello everybody and welcome back to another Wednesday One Shot. I'm so sorry that I haven't been able to do these the past few weeks. I've just been really busy. I've been all over the place with work and I haven't had a chance to sit down and do a chat. I did one and then I hated it and deleted it. So anyway, but I'm kind of running out of like topics to sit down and chat with you guys about. I really use these Wednesday videos as ways to kind of like let you get to know me a little bit more and a little bit like what I'm about just so that uh, yeah, you you are inclined to maybe watch my vlogs because you find these common things with me and that will, um, you know, make you want to hang out with me for 30 minutes in a vlog. At this point, you guys know I'm an agoraphobic and I'm working on it and that I'm in therapy, that I'm sober. You guys know that, um, what else did I tell you? <laughs> that I have sleep paralysis things. I thought that was really interesting and why I got my tattoo. So anyway, I've opened up to be a little bit more vulnerable in these sit down videos. And at this point we are mostly caught up. So I hope you're okay with this, but the sit down videos will likely start to become a little bit more geared towards one of my thrifty projects so I could sit down and do a project or a recipe and that was the original idea anyway. I just wanted to get these ones out of the way. A handful of people that have been here already know what happened because I talked about it in my vlogs as it was in real time happening just because I took a lot of those videos down. I just felt like my life had kind of gone in a different direction and uh, I didn't want to think about the store anymore and I didn't want to talk about the store anymore and for me the best way to do that is just to remove it from existence and that's how I handle things. Deleting all of those vlogs was what I needed to do to move forward but I am going to plant this video here so everyone has just a complete update of what happened, what my store was, how it happened from the beginning to the middle to the end, and I'm gonna try to do it in a decent amount of time. <laughs> so buckle up, cause here we go. So just a really quick uh, mention of just what the store was, if anybody doesn't know what this is or doesn't know what I'm talking about. For a about a year, I had a small, little micro business thrift store slash beauty studio inside of this three story antique mall. Actually it's four story, but the top floor I think is apartments. So the second and third was the stores. And then the top floor where you walk in was this huge antique store. But the second floor was micro businesses and the bottom floor is a mixture of a built-in library that the owner had built himself back in the eighties, I think. And then some of the micro businesses down there. I just graduated from getting my micro blading and micro shading, my PMU permanent cosmetics certification. I just graduated. We had just come out of COVID. I went to this class when it was still like really thick in the COVID, but it was out of lockdown. And I had, you know, we all got some bonuses from the government and I used that to put some money into trying to learn a new trade. I was thrift store shopping. I was actually shopping when I found this center little micro business section. And lo and behold, there is a micro business in here that is doing the microblading services out of their little shop. And I was like, look at that. I could do that. And then I turned around and there was another one. I'm like, oh my God, there's two microbladers, two permit PMUs. We'll just say PMU. Okay. Two PMUs in the same space. I can do this. How do I get a store? As I'm walking around, there's this guy who's just kind of perusing the halls. And I asked him if he'd worked there. And he said, well, this is my store. And his store was actually two spaces. He had so much stuff. It was all sports uh, resale stuff. The nicest guy was able to answer all my questions and just how to get on the wait list to get a store. And that's where it all began. I got on the wait list, I was accepted, and I was given a very small space, the smallest one actually in the entire place. I loved it. It was quaint and it was perfect and it was really low rent and it was a great start for, I mean, I was paying less for that space than I would if I were to rent a booth from a studio. So I just felt like this is gonna be my best bet. So that's what I went with. And I just happened to have a lot of thrift stuff that I had been saving up to try to resell anything to make extra money, right? I'm just trying everything I can to earn income without having to go back to working retail because 
makeup artists were all laid off after COVID and I really just was trying to pivot. I pivoted so many times on what to do with my life. Changed out the battery. Hopefully the light's the same. If not, now you know why. So that all happened and um, I got on the wait list. I got approved. I got my little store and I was able to make it to where all of the clothes were hanging up and if I would get booked for a makeup service or a brow service, I would take all the clothes off the rack on a roller rack and put it under the stairs and you couldn't even see it. So it literally turned into a brow and makeup studio very quickly. And then as soon as that was over and I had all the time to sit in the store and try to sell some stuff, I would move everything back out. And I just had such a great time adding inventory, going thrifting, adding inventory. I had friends of mine who owned their own little businesses that you know had soaps and skincare and candles and things. And I would either buy it wholesale from them and just sell it outright from the store. Or I had one or two that were consigning. It was really fun. I started to feel a little bit like the space was really small and there was an opportunity and I have to be careful here because this isn't just me that I'm talking about and I don't want to like speak about private business that was somebody else's situation and mine together. So I'm always like really careful about that but there was at one point an agreement that you know I was going to get a bigger space um, with a friend and then that fell through. It just didn't work out and I'm not going to go into why it's not a big deal. Everything's fine, but it's just like kind of private. Um, but that just ended up not working out. So with that not working out and then the main problem I had, and this was with the small store and the big store, had it in my head that if this is right for me and this is what should work out, that I will find something that I can do remote on a computer from my store so that I can at least be making income if there's no customers or really slow sales. Put that energy out into the universe like please send me a job <laughs> like I can do remote from here so that I can keep my place and I couldn't find anything because the entire world was looking for remote work after the pandemic the entire world <laughs> like everybody was looking for something to do from home couldn't find any remote work at all that would help me sustain the business then on top of that I, when I moved to the lower space I was told that construction would begin on the building next to us that was going to be a three-story parking garage and that they were going to be demolitioning part of the wall of the entire side of the business and that actually affected other businesses. It, it was said that it wasn't going to affect me but I knew that there would be noise and there would be a lot of dust and construction dust and disruption and just that making me feel anxious and at that time I started picking up some editing and like little small little gigs here and there where I was editing and I needed to be able to hear and I also worried about the construction kind of deterring people from wanting to shop so I thought man I don't have a chance the irony is now the construction got halted so they're not even doing it but they did have so much dust and crap coming they started the construction right when I decided Decided to leave the dust was there it was everywhere it was a mess so they've halted that but knowing that that lingering would come back at any point I think would still make me not want to be there the other thing is is that there's no heat within the um, lower floor so the downstairs was freezing cold and it had really high ceilings so there was no way to heat it so I was really uncomfortable The fact that I was agoraphobic was not really a factor in all of this, but it did have a part in when the place that I'm trying to create a safe space that's outside of my house, that's kind of one of the reasons why I wanted a store was to get me out of the house. If that space starts to become threatened with things that cause anxiety or stress to me, then my agoraphobia will kick in and avoid going there. I won't want to go there. I started to find these reasons to not want to go and I instead of loving and getting so excited about going to my store like I did when it was that little space, I started to feel this not wanting to go. I want to stay home and that to me means that somewhere that stopped feeling like a safe space and I think a lot of that has to do with just the being uncomfortable while there. There's a lot of riffraff coming in and out because downtown started to get a little weird after the pandemic. It was always a little weird, but it got weirder. And so there was 
a few times some people in the place that I just didn't feel safe. Work in downtown environments when I was a bartender, I used to have to deal with riffraff coming in and out of the bars all the time. So it's not like I was a stranger to that, but feeling isolated when one of the other stores, so one of the people that actually worked there had a store and it was a guy and he's a big dude and he had a store across from me. And when he was there and I was there, I felt safe because I knew that he was right there. But when he wouldn't be open, <laughs> I was alone. I was completely alone downstairs. There was no other stores. And that really scared me. I started to not feel safe. If I could have waited it out, yeah, sure, maybe that would have changed. Unfortunately, and I hate to say this, and I didn't know if I was going to say this in this video or not, but um, he ended up passing away. And so that also would have been something that I think would have really been hard for me to be down there alone and then also knowing that he's passed and he's gone he's not going to come back and then i'm really alone just all of this was starting to pile up i was so excited when i told everybody that i was opening a little micro business store i was so proud of myself making a whole dream of mine come true ever since i was a kid I wanted a store. I wanted a thrift store, honestly. I became obsessed with the show, The Ghost Whisperer, and the main character who is Jennifer Love Hewitt. Her name in the show is Melinda Gordon, and it's on right now on the TV. Like, I listen to Ghost Whisperer all day long. It's like my comfort TV. And she has her own antique store. And I would envision myself within her life, like it's minus the ghosts, but I would envision myself within her life where I had a little antique shop and I would get in my adorable car with my cute outfit and I would go to my antique place. I would open it up, have my coffee and talk to the neighbors and talk to the people in the city. And that was such a dream. It was such a dream. I, I think I became obsessed with the Ghost Whisperer specifically because of her lifestyle. So when I was within that manifestation, I was so proud, I was so happy with this little store. The overhead wasn't so much that I couldn't handle it. It wasn't as intimidating. I think it was like I jumped the shark. You know that saying, jump the shark is when like you change something that wasn't broken. I should have stayed in my small space. I think I would still, I still think about it. Sometimes I'm like, is it, I wonder if anybody's in it. Should I like go back? <laughs> but I don't want to. I just know that, that first of all, the location just isn't what I'm looking for. And I don't want a store where I have to sell goods at all. Like I just don't want to have to deal with inventory and overhead and people coming in and out and shopping and me having to be there all the time. Like I would prefer, if anything, to have like a small studio in a part of town that is like a place that has some coffee shops around the corner and things that are walkable, but private studio maybe above something in a little small office where I can do microblading PMU services and maybe some makeup services and then be closed when I don't have a booking. Slightly embarrassing to have to admit to people like, I'm already closing my store, but I did a whole year and that was honestly, the lease was a year. The loss of my pride was the biggest hit. <laughs> when you have something that you've been thinking about and dreaming about your entire life and then you have to walk away, it's really, really hard. It's really hard. That wasn't crying, I just lost my voice. I didn't cry when I closed it and I think that's because it was so stressful. It was a relief. <laughs> It was a relief. I was so glad I didn't have to tend to this thing anymore. A huge weight was lifted off of me. The pressure and the weight was so intense. I'm so glad I don't have to worry about that. But now I have all that inventory. So that's still weight kind of following me around. And so for a while I thought, well, I'll take this to a place and consign it. And one of the stores across from me was like, I'll take it. So when I took it consigning, it just was so slow. And it just, I, I think I made like 20 bucks. <laughs> I was like, what's the point? I'm gonna get it all back. I'm gonna list it on my web shop. I'm gonna talk about it on my YouTube. I'm gonna show you guys pieces that I think are great and they're gonna be for sale in my web shop. So in my new dreams and my new manifestations after pivoting and pivoting, I got dizzy. I am now onto this next phase of finding balance in my life and my career. Being okay with failing. That's the thing too is I was daydreaming so much about being Melinda Gordon that it took up all of my daydream space that now that that's gone, I have room for a new dream that's more right for me and a little bit more of what I would like to be doing. <music> 
there is always a lesson. I feel like no matter what, in any situation, I can look at it like there was a reason for that to not work out. There's a reason for that to fail because if that didn't fail, then I wouldn't be here. And if I'm here and I'm grateful for what I have over here, then that was a lesson and that's okay. And I, I, don't, I don't care what other people think Maybe I do a little, but I don't care what other people think about my store closing and it being a, you know, a loss. Maybe I'm a Linda Gordon, but a private studio. You know, I still want to get my coffee. I still want to get my cute little car with my cute little outfit and head to my private studio and do a service. And then that's it. And then I can go home and I don't have to babysit the store all day. Um, so that's it. That's all. I just wanted to explain that to you guys. I hope I've touched on everything that I've been meaning to. It was a lot of brain dumping. I think this is something that might help other people who've had dreams about things that haven't turned out the way that they want. So that's why I wanted to share it. Um, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not. I've got a lot going on, mostly thrift <laughs> and some makeup. And I'll see you guys on the next video, whatever it is. Bye. Bye.